So Josie and Lundy are scheduled for 10, and the familiar face of Steve Smoger, double S, is the referee. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions in your separate dressing rooms. Please my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. God bless you both. He's just about 20 minutes removed, hello is there. Steve Smoger, Thank as you. he says hello there to us. From what I feel is one of the greatest exhibitions a referee has ever had. Nolan. Mickey Ward versus Emmanuel Nolan. Augustus, which was here in Nolan. New Hampshire. Hampton Beach Casino, one of the fights of the year, universally recognized okay. many, many years ago. And that was a hot Friday night. night and it was a hot night, and as you just so well described, tremendous fights. And one of the fights that really got lifted Mickey Ward to his big fights on the national spotlight was Arturo Gatti. Left hand from Lundy. Talked about those fast hands of the Philly-based fighter. Well, I think more importantly than just that, Joe, I talked about Lundy to switch and that I thought he might come out southpaw early, and he, does. and he has. He's usually an orthodox fighter, but a lefty now versus the lefty. Lundy trying to take that southpaw style advantage and confidence away from a Josie early on. Now, Lundy is naturally left-handed. But he normally fights in an orthodox stance, but can switch, as Teddy noted. And funny you said that. A Josie naturally righty. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? But he made himself into a southpaw. And you know, a lot of people think that makes sense because why not have the dominant hand out in front? The hand that you can use more regularly. Yeah, you're jabbing with that front hand. The turn hands. over that hook fast with it. Yeah, and the hand that you use probably 70%, maybe 80% of the time. Let it go! Let it go! But you know what I'm How did you deal with young amateur fighters? A kid comes in, he's 12, 13, 14 years old. You just let them fall into their natural rhythm of what feels comfortable for them? Do you watch it and advise them somehow early in their career? How does that come about? You always watch it. You always making adjustments to what kind of talent, what kind of temperament also, what kind of confidence, what kind of way of thinking a fighter has. But if I thought of, if I saw a fighter and asked him, what's your dominant hand? What do you write with? What do you throw a ball with? If, if he was a lefty, I'd make him a southpaw. If he was a righty, I'd make him orthodox. In the old days, you would take guys that were lefties and turn them and force them to be orthodox fighters because you'd get black ball. A lot of managers in the old days didn't want to fight southpaws. They want business. Exactly. But nowadays, as long as you can fight, as long as you have a good record, as long as you have a good promoter, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to avoid you. So you don't see guys turning southpaws into orthodox fighters like they used to. Keep the head move. Relax. Good move. Good move. You're going to see a Jose. Not a sick and destroy guy. Southpaw doesn't just walk in, but he's available. He's right in front of you. He likes to go in and out, and he only fights in spurts. He'll come up and give you chances. Chances Lundy has been taking advantage of to score. Lundy's scoring pretty well here in the final 30 seconds of round number one. Lushigan, Nikola Josie. Talked about fighting in spots. More consistent was Hank Lundy at the end of that first round. You know, both these fighters have been involved. I'm not wishing it on them, but must do my job. They have been involved with some head clashes. Lundy has been cut from a head clash. Sometimes he'll come in there a little bit with the nugget. And so has. But Jose been involved with a little banging of the heads in his career. Lundy has come off the floor to win several times. Matter of fact, he's been on the floor in five separate fights. But in fairness, a lot of people say he doesn't have a chin, but he's got plenty of arm. As I said, he's gotten off the floor a couple times to win. And some of those times when he's been dropped, it was just his glove 
that touched the campus that registered it as a knockdown. Both men pick up the pace here, trading as Josie was sprinting in with that series of lefts and rights, now doubling up that right hand. Both men will fight in spurts. The spurts faster on the side of Lundy. And the Josie, as I said the last round, he's will cover up, going to that peekaboo, and give you a chance to just get off and handcuff him a little bit, keep him busy, and maybe score on by putting right, him together. Right hand to the belt line by Josie. Josie likes to use his legs, not really to move around the ring, but to go out and go in. As he just did right there. In and out, in and out. Three punch combination. That's the rhythm of Josie will be looking for if he's gonna be effective tonight. And the pattern he will be looking for. And you can look for it at home. Lundy staying with the southpaw style. Left hand scoring. Well, he did just what we talked about on the fight plan, actually. He slipped the jab, the lead right hand of the Josie, and then countered with the left hand. So a counter left hand from Hank Lundy here in round number two, getting the attention of a Josie. There's a good right jab off that hip. Trying to catch him with an uppercut coming in that time. See, Lundy's going to depend on some counterpuncher. Going to lay back, make you miss, pick spots with those quick hands. So Josie wants to be steady, in and out, and steady. End of two here. Well, here's what we talked about in the fight plan, and Lundy does it. Take the jab away, the southpaw jab away from a Josie by being a southpaw. Slip to your left, counter with the left hand. And what you hope to do is get a Josie to be a little tentative, a little thoughtful, maybe too thoughtful, about throwing that jab. Use your boxing, everything's short. Wouldn't be a bad idea, Joe, for a Jose to aim a couple of those punches. He only fights in spurts. Make some of those spurts to the body of a man who's in front of you, Lundy, who likes to use his legs a little bit to move. That time he did send a left and a right to the body. Even though Lundy does everything quicker, faster, there are similarities with these two fighters. They're both southpaw right now. That's one easy one. The other is Lundy will give you chances where they go into that peak of blue and just come up in front of you, just like a Jose. Big difference is Lundy looks for counters, but for you to lead sometimes in any counter. And for the most part, a Jose just looks to do that. Go out, go in. And London will take his legs to the side once in a while. Don't punch. Step, 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 step. I look for the corner of a Jose to, again, part the punt. Increase the heat a little bit. He's the bigger man between Junior Welter and Welterweight his whole career. London has been a lightweight most of his career. Another one of those countering opportunities moments ago that Lundy filled with the left hand. If you're the bigger man, well, go inside, go to the body of the smaller man. That's what a Jose seems to be doing. And you're going to see him doing it, as we suggested, in spurts. He fights like in bushels, you know, like a bushel of corn. You get a whole bunch of them at one time. It's probably that crucial passing. That's kind of how Joseph goes about 
his combinations. There's a left hand from Hank Lundy that backed up with Josie. The close hit trying to do with Muhammad Ali and play it off like it didn't affect him the way Ali played off the right hands from Ernie Shavers years ago. One of the most powerful punches that the division has ever seen. Welterweight champion of the world, Tony DeMarco, back on April 1st, 1955. Can you imagine just a neighborhood away? He went over to the Boston Garden and won the welterweight championship of the world. Gave way to Carmen Basilio, who was TKO'd by one of the all-time greats a little later on. But nice to have Tony DeMarco with us ringside for Friday night fights. Just over the border from Massachusetts here in Salem, New Hampshire. DeMarco around during a time, a golden time in boxing when there were so many good fighters. Let me rephrase that, so many great fighters. And DeMarco, well, he got it done with a powerful left hook. 81 years old now is DeMarco. Nice to have the former world champion with us, Teddy Scorecard, as we are at the start of round number three. 29-28 for Hank Lundy. You know, you Works saw for both men, Teddy, at this stage of the career. Yeah, you could say a crossroads fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lundy's lost two in a row. He can't afford to lose three in a row, that's for sure. And if Jose's only loss was by knockout, if he wants to show that he's on the level of top guys, which he already had an opportunity with Matesi, and he showed he wasn't on that level, not yet anyway. Here's a clash of heads. He wants another chance to show that. He needs to get it done tonight. We talked about heads coming together, or at least I did, early on, and as you said, just got a sample of it a moment ago. You know, I started to say the last round, tough round to score. Lundy looked like he staggered Ojose with a punch, but Ojose was a little busier during the round, maybe up to that point, scoring a little bit better. You wonder what the judges look at, but the punch that Lundy scored well with was that same punch we talked about in the fight plan. He slipped to his left, took the jab of a Jose and countered with the left hand. The corner needs to explain to a Jose the same way as we saw it in the fight plan, that he's got to be careful when he's throwing that jab, that Lundy does have the ability to slip in and counter. What I think a Jose should do is make sure when he throws that jab, he moves his head. Or maybe even better, faint a little bit, get Lundy to make that move. See Lundy looking to make that move? Yes, he was. He's looking to slip and then counter. Lundy likes to counter. You have to know your man. Do your homework. Give him a little faint. Make Lundy make that defensive move too soon. And then you can throw the punch after the move is gone. Time he shoulder rolled and came back with the left hand. Josie and Lundy going to have four rounds in the books here, scheduled for ten. Well balanced man about. Take a look here, Lundy. Again, we talked about in the fight plan an opportunity to slip the jab, counter that time. Not a straight left hand, a left uppercut. He mixed it up. But the same principle, somebody needs to explain to a Jose, and to be frank with you, it should have been explained going into the fight. <laughs> that when you throw that lead jab and Lundy is in the southpaw position, guess what? He has a tendency to slip to his left and counter it. And Lundy has maintained that southpaw position all night long against the southpaw, originally from Africa, now New York based, a Jose. And again, the thing that you do with your Josie, first of all, you throw that jab from a little further out, not from so close where the counter can get to you so quickly. You gotta be a little further out, get full range on that jab where you're safe. You gotta move your head after the jab, not be stationary where that counter can find you, or give a little faint. Make one thing, make that head movement premature. 
CompuBox checks in with us and gives us the total punch count of 274 to 232 with Josie in a 57-54 connect advantage. Not Comparable easy. numbers. Yeah, not the easiest rounds, Joe, to score. No. The last two rounds, I thought of Jose fighting in spurts, might have been a little busier in spots, but the more telling punches landed probably by London. There wasn't many of them. Thus, Teddy's scorecard looks like this, 39-37, but close rounds, as we've discussed. And as we discussed, watch London. He's there for you. He stands, he waits for a lead, looking to counter. That's the first on his mind. You wait too long on him, then he'll lead. He'll get off. He'll use the jab like that. But Josie waited too long, didn't do anything. So London used the jab to beat him to the mark. But on the mind of London is, Take what my opponent throws at me, make it miss, and throw something back. Mark. A little like Floyd Mayweather. Hey, 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 left. Right there. Punch. Punch the right there. There's a short left hand scored by London and had something behind it. Now he's taking small steps forward, looking to corral the Josie in that corner. The punch that obviously the drum state just wasn't prepared for. Get on, don't wait. Conditioning will come into play in this fight with this heat, with these lights making it even higher. And there's those left hand again. Same punch. Walk it down. Walk the head. That's a Josie. Tries to hang on in the five moments of round number five. Talked about in the fight plan, London should come out southpaw. He did. And why? Also, he can land the left hand, as he does right there, twice. And once again, from the southpaw position, London understood that he could counter the lead right hand, the jabbing hand of a Josie. Oh, that ultra slow mo on that last left hand was something as we begin round number six here. Lundy remembers lost two straight close decisions. Most of the fight for Jose been in England. He's not in, in, in England tonight. Out of 32 bouts, this is only his fourth fight in the United States. His record is 2 and 1 in the U.S. 29 and 0 outside of the United States. That lone loss came in Vegas against Lucas Matisse. He was at the Hard Rock. He was game, he was gutsy, but he was beaten down. TKO'd in the 10th round. Quite early in the night, I talked about inactivity. It hurts. There's inactivity going in here for Jose. Go back two fights, he was off one year. Josie ties up. You know, we talked about the speed advantage and the ability to counter for Lundy. Also, another advantage is probably the quality of fighters that he's fought, Joe. I mean, for the exception of the Maltese fight, Lundy has been in with the overall much better cop. And he's showing it right now. Real Diaz. Ray Beltran. Exactly. Don't punch, don't punch. And that don't left hand, by the way, for Lundy is still there. No change in the approach of both Josie to take away that left hand of Lundy. But one thing you do see as a change. See the left hand left again. Low range left hand, and then he lined it up a second time in the hammer and hang one. I'll tell you the change I see. 
The change we talked about that would come about from Lundy landing the left hand. Tentative miss from a Josie. Not using the jab now, giving up the jab a little bit. And reaching in with hooks. Punches that steps, are even steps, steps. easier to count. So Lundy's gotten what he wanted. He's gotten a Josie to think too much about what he's gonna throw. Controlling the middle rounds here of this scheduled 10 rounder is Philly Tank Lundy. Teddy, the foolproof punch of the night brought to you by Just For Men. Ryan Pilziski, left hook, fifth round. Yeah, Soto reaches in from the south pole position, wide shots, never sees the left hook that lands on the tip of his chin. All he remembers, Soto that is, is he was throwing a wide left hand and it never got there. Seventh round here at Rockingham Park in Salem, New Hampshire of our main event. Hank Lundy had a big round in the fifth. Left hand, hurt the southpaw of Josie. Strategy by Lundy coming out of southpaw. He's done beautiful work with the counters all night long. Put together a good six round as well. And now four to go in the main event. You know how to handle the southpaw, how to take the southpaw advantage away. Lundy has beaten two southpaws in his career. Very comfortable with lefty, especially he had that secret weapon, that dimension that Lundy has where you can turn southpaw and fight fire with fire. Give your opponent a taste of his own medicine. That's how Lundy deals with southpaw. Fifty-nine, fifty-five on Teddy's scorecard for Hayward Hay. Early rounds were close. Fifth and sixth were not. No, they won't, Joe. You're right. One thing deals with cell phones the way you deal with vampires. Puts the mirror on them. Throws his own image right back at him. Or throws their image right back at him. With, which is much better in the ring than wearing a garlic-laden necklace. Yeah, because that smells. And with this heat and... Humidity, it, it, it gets soggy and heavy. <laughs> but the guys in the truck would love to use it on pasta after the show. They're always ready to have a plate of pasta. Right now, a plate, yeah, a plate of left hand. Lundy's on the attack. Last 30 seconds of the seventh. But Josie in trouble. Staggered back into that red corner. Looking to survive, and that does tie him. Yeah, left hand is bothering him all night. And don't think that he's not bothering him about now, too. 94 degrees ringside here at night. This heat wave that's come through New England and other bright lights and the low ceilings here at Rockingham Park. Big round for Lundy. Well, obviously, we understood the fight plan what Lundy was going to look to do. Slip the jab to the left from the southpaw position and counter with your left hand. Also, obviously, so far tonight, witnesses of Jose did not understand that Lunday could do that and would do that. And that's why he's losing the fight. He didn't scout his opponent properly or understand his opponent properly coming in, and Lunday did. As did you with the fight plan, sizing this thing up. All night long, that one move has been the only move Lundy's needed. Slip to the left. From the south pole, Josie, slip his jab, and then fire the left hand back. Doubling up that jab and then touching him with the left hand. I love the most good throw. I mean, you lay too long in front of him. You know, get a good jab and get off and reach it to the bottom. You get up to the most part again. You're looking for those times. The punch combination. More the aggressor now on the lead. Comfortably in control. Able to have it at his way, his pace. 
here as Bundy, far as saying use the jab. Bundy has been developing pretty well as a fighter since he's been showing up on our air, and he's been doing it for quite a while, so I've seen a real good progression development in London, where he's settled down and become a much more complete fighter, a more mature fighter, just a more professional fighter. Yeah, he's rounded out more, more involved. His ninth fight on ESPN tonight. That he does now, Lundy. He was enamored by his athleticism and speed back in those days. Josie, lacking confidence and just what Lundy planned would happen. He's afraid to let his hands go now that he's been counted so many times, Joe. And as you said early on, you pick up on it, that swelling. The right eye of, of Joe say he has that eye about halfway closed. Also a little bit of blood coming from the nose. Two rounds to go. Trainer Tiger just this moments ago. What you're trying to do is survive right now, and you let them survive. Pull a trick on this dude, man. That's all you got to do. Pull a trick on this dude, you got it. Okay? You're just trying to survive. All right? So that was after the eighth round when Lundy came back to the corner in complete control against Achosi. After that big fifth round, continued into the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the swelling of the right eye, the steady work with the counter left hands, and Achosi affected and slowing. Well, that's the trainer thinking business, and he's not really wrong. Thinking business that. That's it. It's not enough to just win. You want people to cry, to scream, and promoters to cry and scream and call you up and want you back because no way there, yo. you make a statement. That's and that's the trainer saying we can put an exclamation point on this fight and make a statement with a knockout. The problem is the temperament of London is the temperament of London. A good fighter to become a fairly solid fighter, but he's also a thoughtful, not bad, careful not fighter for the most part. Come on, no way. Don't fighters that like to counter punch, that tells you they're not a seek and destroy guy. They're a guy that thinks and likes to use technique and polish as much as anything else. saying he's hurt as uh, Josie is on the receiving end of that left hand. He's not throwing much out right now. Circling up on his feet, got caught again. You know what Josie's in trouble if you didn't know. You've been watching the fight, you know. But if you just came in and you understood his style, you'd really know right away because he's using the ring. Mm -hmm. That's not what he usually does. No. He usually stays in front, goes in and out. That's it. But now he's using the entire ring. He's in trouble. He's been circling for the better part of the past minute and a half. Come on, he don't even want to win now. He's just trying to survive. Come on, get One thing out, that Rodney could do a better job when he's that's dealing it. with what he's dealing on. with now, a guy is surviving. Moving, using the ring, Lundy can jab on his way in. Jabs the chest, stabilize the Jose and make it a little easier to control him, to get him stationary. Don't just walk in and follow him with no jab. You give him a chance to pot shot you then. A little over anxiousness by Lundy. 
Into nine, one round to go. Let's listen into the corners. Watch it. Better, yeah. That's what you gotta do. You see, he look like that on the cut table. Right? He's coming out this way. He's gonna come with everything that's playing. Yeah. He says tight, stick with the stick, and close the show. An energized Hank Lundy. Hard work indeed to arrive at points like this. Let's see how he chooses to finish up the night. He can choose it the way that he's lifted. The way he's lifted most of his career and the way he's fought tonight. As a catapult, as a guy picking spots and being thoughtful and responsible in his mind. He accelerated after the fourth round. That is not a knockdown. Fifth round was his big round. Left hand landed and started the downhill course for a Josie. Set the home one up, baby. Set it up. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that. Way. You are what you are. You're a boxer, even though your head in the corner is urging you to an exclamation point to finish it, to bring the curtain down. You're still going to behave like a boxer, and that's what one thing is. Is that what we're seeing here halfway through round 10? As he will be coasting in for what was a much needed win after those tough to take decision losses. After being a contender at 135 pounds, struggling a bit there to make weight, coming up to 140. He worked his way into prime position before an upset loss. Got the best of him against Ray Beltron in New Jersey last July. Fourth fight, about to get his second loss here stateside. ESPN Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra, proud sponsor of Friday Night Fights, and as always, encourages you to relax responsibly. And in part by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram, and by Quick Crete. Visit quickcrete.com. Quick Crete. It's what America's made of. Stay with us. More to come. As we are back here, Teddy and Joe ringside. CompuBox numbers 
have Hank Lundy with a 133 to 98 advantage in total punches. Teddy's scorecard, early rounds fairly close, and then Lundy just took over with a huge fifth round. And right down the stretch, 99-91, says Teddy. To hear how the judges had it, we send it up to the ring to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a nice round of applause out here for both of these fighters. After 10 rounds of action here at Rockingham Park, we go to the judges' score totals. Frank Wells scored this bout 100 to 90. Leo Gerstel and Mike Nolan both scored this bout 98-92. All for your winner by unanimous decision from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He earned it, and he got it. Hammer and Hank Lundy after those decisions.